China right now, I don't know if you saw this, but China is actually warning right now, saying an increasingly worried Chinese president tells Trump to exercise restraint over North Korea is the headline on Zero Hedge. So they're worried about North Korea. We've got some reasons why, but apparently there's a meeting going on today uh, regarding this. That's right. And while meetings at the White House aren't rare for the senators and for you know a president to call all the senators to the White House for a meeting, it is rare to have these four people at that meeting, those being Secretary of State Rex Tillerson, Secretary of Defense James Mattis, Mad Dog, uh, Director of National Intelligence Dan Coats, and General Joseph Dunford, who's the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. It's very rare to have those four men in the meeting. We have this, uh, it's a Reuters article on Infowars.com right now, and you could read about that and what they're talking about. But I, I'm sure it has to do the same with what's going on in China, what China's been saying to us. They're asking us to urge restraint as we have this uh, crybaby. I think Ben Garrison uh, drew it best. There's a little, maybe you guys can find this. There's a little uh, Kim Jong-un sitting there crying like his te temper tantrum. Oh, yeah, like and you a got baby. Trump and you got Jing and, uh, and then Putin all sitting there, you know, like parents scolding him. And that's kind of what we're dealing with. We're dealing with this guy who doesn't have a governor, who doesn't have anything, you know, st any whim, he just, you know, he blows people up with aircraft carrier, uh, air anti-aircraft guns. That should say enough. That's how he kills pe members of his family. He also six wild, hungry dogs on them. And those are different ways. Hey, he's he's poisoned Korea. members of his own family oh, as South well. South Korea, China, and the United States. There you see the problem child. And uh, Ben Garrison really does encapsulate the best of, uh, or he gets the gist of really what's going on in the world. But that's what's going on at the White House right now. So it'll be anxious to see, you know, it'll be interesting to see what goes on the next few days. Because I thought maybe something would break out over Easter weekend. Uh, nothing's gone on. And it's been kind of this stalemate, this staring contest uh, with uh, both sides looking back at each other. I've been calling it war chicken. Yeah. On Saturday, this story broke. Volleyball over. North Koreans go back to work at nuclear site. Apparently, this nuclear site in North Korea, which kind of had some inactivity for a while, is apparently buzzing with activity now, and that might have something to do with the president of China's message and this meeting today. You know, maybe North Korea really is, you know, some people are theorizing that Kim Jong-un is basically freaking out right now. He feels like it's a last desperation chance for him, possibly, and that might be why China is saying this. This meeting is going on, this increased activity at this nuclear site. It's all very interesting stuff, and I'm just glad. I mean, in Japan right now, um, I saw a story today that bomb shelters are And selling. water purifiers. And water purifiers. I wonder why that is. Yeah. Well, they're close to North Korea. They're worried about, um, you know, stuff contaminating their drinking water. They're worried about being able to survive a nuclear explosion. One of the only countries, you know, we've launched test nuclear bombs, in our, and so has Russia. And China, I'm sure, has done their own nuclear testing, but... They're the oh, yes. only country thus far who's been hit with a nuclear weapon. So they're very serious when it comes to preparedness. And, uh, you know, especially if you're living in one of these coastal areas, you better have those items, plus also an evacuation plan ready in case there is a, another tsunami like we saw back in uh, 2012, I believe. You know, there was another interesting development. Uh, this one was not in North Korea, but this was a story on Zero Hedge today. Bomb attack hits secretive U.S. base in Afghanistan as Mattis makes surprise visit to Kabul. So this bomb goes off. Apparently it was a car bomb that was at the gates of the U.S. base out there. And that's really all that they know so far, at least when this story was last updated. I haven't, I haven't seen or heard too much else. But there's a lot developing right now, Rob, as far as these war games are being concerned. I mean, there's all these missile tests, Russia flying aircraft, the United States flying aircraft, submarines, um, you know, threats, uh, Kim Jong-un also said, great war is coming. I mean, these are all some serious things, and it's amazing to me, actually. I mean, honestly, if we want to really get down to it, I think the amazing thing to me is that there's still people out there that just have just no clue. This doesn't seem to bother them. Right. How, I, like, that's what I'm saying. How does this not bother you? I mean, okay, we can all... It's not like I have to sit here and be miserable and just have my head down all day, uh, but it's like, I mean... This is our future. This is our planet. Well, over end of last week, over the weekend, they had these power outages in L.A., New York, and San Francisco. And what it was part of was a nuclear testing, speaking in North Korea, of what would happen, I think, if these big cities got hit with an electromagnetic pulse and the power went out. But it was part of Operation Gotham Shield, and we have a report from John Bound that I want you guys to get ready. We'll go to in one second that talks about 
what's going on here? You said that the Japanese are making preparations. Well, I'm sure the Chinese are making preparations. I'm sure the South Koreans are, they probably are ingrained with all the preparations they have to make because they have to, they, they have about 20 minutes to get underground before anything happens if they're going to have any hope of survival. But, um, but here's uh, Zero Hedge was saying it could have been a geomagnetic storm. There's, there's, all, there's a bunch of different theories out there. There's the part of the Gotham Shield. There's the geomagnetic storm. There's also a theory that this could have been some other form of a hack with the recent CIA Vault 7 leaks because of mm -hmm. WikiLeaks. Some people might know how to compromise some of these systems, get inside, and then hack the power grid. So, so there's a bunch of different theories out there. I know John right. Bound has one of his own. Yeah, so let's go to this report now. I, I got an email this morning. People are saying, oh, you guys aren't covering Operation Gotham Shield. I think we had an article on it over the weekend. I, Alex actually, did a video yeah, on it say, over Info the weekend. Infowars.com was the first place I saw any stories <laughs> yeah. on it. So it's amazing. I, I think it's because we put up so much news so quickly. Sometimes things roll off. The front part of the page and you have to do a little digging and we have so much content that if you don't listen to you know all of it you're you're, you're gonna miss it obviously. yeah so gotham shield is that you you have to simulate a nuke blast over manhattan as actual war nears so our country is preparing this and uh, here's john bound with that report i'm not gonna sit here and take it anymore i continue to be much more concerned when it comes to our security with the prospect of uh, a nuclear weapon going off in Manhattan. Power outages in San Francisco, New York, Frankfurt, Kentucky, and Los Angeles. Coincidence, or were they part of the drill known as Operation Gotham Shield that will finally commence between April 24th and April 26th? Basically, a simulation drill and not the actual detonation of nuclear weapons will be underway. SHTF plan writes, During this exercise, four nuclear devices, two of which are rendered safe during the U.S. Department of Defense Vital Archer exercise and one successful 10 kiloton detonation in the New York City, New Jersey area, along with one smaller detonation on the U.S.-Canadian border, are to take place. Among the organizations involved are the U.S. Department of Energy, the U.S. Department of Defense, U.S. Domestic Nuclear Detection Office, the FBI, FEMA, NORTHCOM, State of New Jersey Office of Emergency Management, the State of New York Office of Emergency Management, and the City of New York Office of Emergency Management. Of course, when an undertaking of this magnitude occurs, caution dictates that we are again reminded of the outcome of previous government agency drills held days before and sometimes the day of that mirror actual world-changing tragedies. Nobody in our government, at least, and I don't think the prior government that could envision flying airplanes in the buildings on such a massive scale. But that turns out not to be true. U.S. military planners did envision and practice those very scenarios. As reported by USA Today, the North American Aerospace Defense Command, NORAD, conducted exercises with fighter jets, simulating hijacked planes flown into the World Trade Center in the two years before the attack. You are actually working today on an exercise that envisioned yes. virtually this scenario? Uh, almost precisely. I was until 2 o'clock this morning because it, it's our job, my own company, Visor Consultants, we specialize in helping people to get their crisis management response. Yeah. Witness number one approached an ATF agent nearby. He claims he asked the agent what had happened, and witness number one says this is what the agent told him. He uh, started getting a little bit nervous. He tried reaching somebody on a two-way radio. I uh, couldn't get anybody, and I told him I wanted an answer right then. He said they were in the briefing. None of the agents had been in there. They had been tipped by their pagers not to come into work that day. Plain as day out of his mouth. Oklahoma City paramedic Tiffany Bible, who heroically responded just minutes after the blast on April 19, 1995, swore in an affidavit. When she arrived, the BATF was in full mop gear, bomb gear that takes at least 30 minutes to put on. When she asked them, oh my goodness, were you guys hurt inside the blast? They said, no, we got tipped off by our pagers not to come in today. It's true. Drills are held all of the time. However, adding to the concern is the occultic nature of 
of Operation Gotham Shield. The term Gotham, an old Anglo-Saxon word meaning goat's town, and a nickname for New York City coined by legendary American writer Washington Irving and later becoming the realm of Batman, has significant free Masonic influence, linking it to the 33rd degree warship of Baphomet. All are worthy. Now you can say that again. Now that is Bruce Wayne's grandfather, Mrs. Cooper. His great-grandfather. I understand he was tapped for skull and bones. Tapped for it? Sir, he founded skull and bones. This ceremony at Ground Zero, preceding the unwelcome construction of the memorial that would be blatantly named the Oculus, could very well be a clear Masonic reference to Aleister Crowley's Thelemic Third Eon known as the Age of Horus. According to Crowley, Horus is gradually growing from the idealism of 20th century chaos, i.e. communism, fascism, etc., into an age of human enlightenment. Yet, who has adopted this concept of the coming of the Antichrist as their own? None other than the puppet masters of the elite shadow government and their new world order. In my line of work, you got to keep repeating things over and over and over again for the truth to sink in, to kind of catapult the propaganda. John Baum for Infowars.com. Powerful report from John Baum there. Yes, and you can see how there's this continuing pattern where there's an exact drill going on that happens to be the exact event that happens. 9-11, of course, the bi biggest example. The most obvious example would have to be the Boston Marathon bombing. And then you have to look at Operation Project Gotham here and the power outages that just hit. Well, actually, they hit everywhere. If you look at the, the overall grid, there were power outages in a lot of major cities. San Francisco, the biggest one. So you have to scratch your head. You have to wonder if the powers that be are testing some sort of global um, initiated collapse, some global initiated panic, or if this is truly just organic things happening. Obviously, these are the questions that we try to cover at Infowars.com. It could have been an agency trying to go, can we bring down the power grid? Right. You know, and, and, or and a, or some other actor, you know, yeah. or a different state actor or individual actor. That's right. There's a lot of different. Or as Trump said, a 400-pound guy sitting in his bed. That's Yeah. <laughs> well, that's who hacked the emails. Uh, USA Today has a little bit of an update on what's going on in, at the Senate. One of their big updates was that it was uh, Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell who organized the meeting. It wasn't Donald Trump asking people to show up. The White House was just serving as a place where that meeting could take place. And this maybe is North to limit, Korea now. Well, maybe to limit leaks. Maybe they're going, if, if we have it in the Senate chamber, somebody's going to hear, somebody's going to leak it out. Let's bring them all to the White House. We know this place is secure. Maybe by now they've... They well, run security agencies. Or another thing that they sometimes do, and I actually think that the Trump administration or the Trump team has kind of done this before, is they'll have different secret meetings or different meetings with different groups, leak certain intel to you know a controlled group to try to see where that intel goes and who the moles are or where the leak's coming from. Yeah, so I there's always that that you could consider, too. So, yeah, and exactly. So Sean Spicer was saying this is a Senate briefing convened by the majority leader, not a White House briefing. Uh, the White House press secretary, Sean Spicer, said we were just serving as the location. So that, I think, might be a big thing. Maybe they didn't want anything getting out. Uh, or maybe something will leak out of this from that meeting, and we'll and hear about know, it. Because yeah. this, at this time, the meeting was held an, over an hour ago. And nobody's reporting on anything coming out of it. So maybe there haven't been any leaks. Well, I don't have... Uh, it doesn't feel like I don't have much say on this game of war chicken. It feels like I'm just on the ship, and I'm hoping that who's ever steering the ship turns it out of the way so that we don't have to head-on collision with whether it's North Korea or China or Russia or whoever it is. Um, I, I'm hoping that whoever is in steering this warship in this game of war chicken does not lead us to a head-on collision, because I don't think any anybody really wants that right now. But I think there may be some powers that be that do. Thank <laughs> you.